we will now answer another interesting question related to the concept of dimension. And I will point out one spot where it's very easy to make a logical mistake. The question is, what is the span of these three vectors? And the key observation is, of course, one that we made earlier, that in each of these vectors, the last entry is the sum of the first two. And this seems to lead to the conclusion that the span of these vectors is a, b, a plus b. Let me write this down. a, b, a plus b. The last entry is the sum of the first two. And this is actually the correct conclusion. But it's the correct conclusion based on an incomplete argument. To demonstrate that the argument is indeed incomplete, let me give you another example. Consider the following three vectors. These three vectors also have the property that the last entry is the sum of the first two. So based on the same logic, we would conclude that the span of these three vectors is also a, b, a plus b. However, these three vectors are clearly all a multiple of, let's say, this one. So all you can get by linear combinations of these three vectors is a, 4a, 5a. Let me write that down. So we see that in this case, the same argument would have led to the wrong conclusion. Now what went wrong? Let's analyze what may have gone wrong. Now we notice that as far as this subspace is concerned, it is still true that the last entry is the sum of the first two. So this space is a subspace of this one. So what the argument tells us, the argument based on the observation that the last entry is the sum of the first two, is that the span is a subspace of this space. Indeed, all we showed is that each one of these vectors belongs to the subspace. But we did not show that the span actually fills this entire subspace. And in fact, we see that in some cases, depending on the vectors, it is actually smaller. This subspace is part of this space, but it is clearly smaller because there are plenty of vectors that are part of this space and not part of this space. For example, any one of these three. So this space is a proper subspace of this one. And that's all that the argument really shows. We notice that these vectors have a certain property in common. It's a linear property, meaning that any linear combination will also share this property. And therefore, any vector in the span of these vectors is in this subspace. But we haven't shown that the span actually fills this entire space. So how do we show that this is the span of these vectors? By counting dimensions. We already know that the span of these vectors is at most two-dimensional. So now let's show that it's precisely two-dimensional. And we can show this by looking at the first two vectors. We could have looked at any two of the three vectors, but let's concentrate on the first two. And they are linearly independent. They're linearly independent because neither one is a multiple of the other. After all, that's the only way in which two vectors could be linearly dependent, if one of them is a multiple of the other. And because neither one is a multiple of the other, these vectors are linearly independent. So we have two linearly independent vectors in the mix. And that shows that the span of these vectors is at least two-dimensional. So if it is at most two-dimensional on the one hand, and at least two-dimensional on the other, then it is precisely two-dimensional. So the span that we're after is a two-dimensional subspace of this space. But this space itself is two-dimensional. Therefore, the span must fill the entire space. It can't be smaller. If it were a proper subspace of this space, then its dimension would be less than two. And we just concluded that its dimension is two. Therefore, we have now completed the argument that shows that this 
is the span of these vectors. And we have once again used linear algebra reasoning and simple counting to answer what would otherwise have been a complicated question.